smidgen smidgen Aha. Ooh. yeah welcome back mm-hmm. 2 a.m podcast yeah episode 68 bars 68 in stew bars getting up there in terms of numbers nearing the 70s yeah we got the, the, the big uh, 69 coming up Big 69 with an even bigger guest that's coming mm. on for that one. <laughs> a special guest. Yeah, yes. I'm actually, I'm very excited. I'm very for, excited about that for one. For 69. And you guys should be too. <laughs> I think even though you don't know who he is. We but. all need to get excited over something. Yeah. <laughs> During quarantine. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been getting excited about tea and hibiscus. Tea. And pianos. Chamomile reign why. supreme. Piano. But that's what I've been on. You've been on a piano grind recently? Yeah, dude. What about them specifically? The way they look. Um, the way they walk. It's the, the way, way they, they are. It's the things they resemble. It's, it's the way they're placed. It's the way they're taken care of. They're just so prestigious. It's the skirts they're they're very they wear. High are you there. talking about like a grand piano, I would imagine? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're not talking about like a child's toy piano. No, I'm talking about. Uh, no, I'm thong. talking about the Yamaha ding, plastic ding, ding, piece ding, of crap. Ding 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 ding. Can you, you know imagine what? the first key they play is, and his name is John Cena. Well, speaking about things larger than life, uh, today's episode is going to be oriented <laughs> on a larger scale. <laughs> yeah, frighteningly large. This is going to have some hard-hitting truth. Some what things that it? y'all need to hear. And if you already knew it, maybe it's good to get a quick refresher. What? But what are you doing over there? Forgive me making a, mo- a new mistake. Sorry. I'm a man of detail. Go on. Fair enough. <laughs> Anyways, we're talking about corporate scandals here on episode 68. Big things are going to be covered. I like how you zoomed in. Why you shouldn't Big things trust corporations. <laughs> we got things such as the Dupont, the Teflon Dupont. scandal. Dupont. Which I don't know why I said it that way. It's an American company, if I remember correctly. Dupont. What year is that? Out of, uh, Zade is the What expert. year was this movie made? Dude. No, not Dark Waters. We're no. not talking about uh, the, the ruffle off of snuff of Mark, Mugabus Mark. or whatever. Oh, Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. Nice. <laughs> AKA the Hulk. So according to Zade, the Dupont. This is according Teflon to Wikipedia, scandal. not me. Well, began in 1945. Well, Zade's the, I guess, the expert when it comes have you, to this. Have you guys seen this movie, Dark Waters? No, I've no, not I have seen not. Dark Waters. I've heard of it, though. It's a great movie. I thought it was a game, too. Dark Waters. No. I'll look it up, but anyways, what's yeah. up with the... The DuPont Teflon scandal. So yeah. basically, uh, DuPont, an American company, um, one of their one of their lawyers originally he uh, he worked for them began to investigate a few uh, accounts from farmers that a lot of their cows were dying. Uh, there was also a lot of weird cancer cases going on. Cancer mm. rates increased. Now, when you say cancer, is it just? general like i i hate to say a basic or basic form of cancer but i mean like more common spread like was it not cardiovascular not, or was it like a more rare specific kind of cancer that can only arise through being introduced to certain chemicals or toxins? very rare cancers okay yeah and so you can continue <laughs> so basically he went down this road and he began to do a whole bunch of investigation into why these cows were dying why all these farmers were you know getting these rare cancers. Yeah. And he found out that DuPont, um, DuPont, which is, is it strictly a chemical company? I'm not sure. Uh, DuPont? Well, it was a man-made No, but, chemi- they, but they use chemicals to make their, uh, what is it? Teflon, they they, like they make a lot of household something. products and... Uh, oh, so like pots, pans and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah. Of the, one of the most uh, notorious things, or one of the most well-known things they've, they're known for is Teflon. Mm. Which is made in nonstick pan, which yeah. uh, has, is present in nonstick pans to this day. But essentially, he found out that, for example, Dupont was guilty of dumping hundreds of thousands of gallons of these chemicals within um, the rivers, and you know the rivers that people drink from local water yeah. sources, yeah, local waterways. And the main ingredient was C eight, right? Yeah, I don't know how. Search which, up the. Which search it's up not the a, name We're not talking it. about a Corvette, but yeah, we are talking about <laughs> a toxic man-made chemical. I can't that was pronounce Created the name. and backed by 3M. I want you guys to try to pronounce it. What is it? 
It's probably easier than than you would think, but it's just a handful. Um, perfluoro, wait, perfluoro octanoic acid. Octanoic. Octanoic. <laughs> perfluoro octanoic or octanoic octanoic. Yeah. Perfluoro oct octane octanoic. Yeah. Acid. And for P anyone that's wondering, it yeah, it's P E R. F L U O R O O man made C -T -A -N -O -I -C chemical by the way A N O I C acid. Well, for short, we're just going to call it PFOA okay. because that's what most people refer to. Or C eight or C eight. Yeah. If you're ever curious. So, but the the most insane thing that if if you watch the movie, the most insane thing that you begin to realize, and and they take you through all the various scenes, is that Dupont and 3M who who merged basically back in what 1945 they knew about all the health effects they have their own studies that they've done on rats where their livers you know blew up their gallbladders blew up um but they willingly released this shit into the american lifestyle so into waste, into water, into well, into not everything. only through that, but also through nonstick coatings for um, pants Ooh, and such yeah, like that's that. The main so, ingredient. So now, not only is this chemical, if you're in an area where it's getting leaked uh -huh. into your water system, or even worse, into your livestock system, so that way it spreads to the entire country, mm -hmm. right? It's now in everything you eat. It's now coating all of the food that you cook in those pants, and so this toxicity. Now, instead of just coming, you know, from this local water source, is now in every single thing you eat that you happen to cook. Yeah, in that pan. mix that in with heat, and that is not good, sir. To nope. give you an idea of how widespread this the C8 yeah. chemical is, <clears throat> I believe they found it in polar bears, and they've also they say, based off of uh, studies, I believe that it's present within ninety nine percent of Americans' bloodstreams. So I would do, very much hope that they have fixed that. Because I don't, I, at this current moment, I do not trust my uh, cooking pan. Oh, that's the fucked up thing. They, they haven't, haven't fixed it. Okay. I don't know if you guys noticed, but um, just try to remember the, the last time you guys bought a new pan and then you started cooking something with it. It had a very weird, distinct smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if you, if you get them a little bit hot. That's yeah. why they tell you not to get non-stick pans or pans that have a non-stick coating. That's not like... Just a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We use like oil a, and a... Like canola oil or... No, that's like you put oil into a pan and then it builds up a layer over time where it's like essentially a non-stick surface. Yeah. Uh, you do, you do that for cast iron yeah. pans, do you know what, for example. A cast iron pan. Yeah, do you know like what I'm talking a, about? It's a heavy metal pan. I'm blanking on what you... Oh, seasoning. When you season a pan. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. It's called seasoning a pan? Yeah. So what you do is you... um If you have a pan that's a little bit rusted out, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. you scrape all the rust off of it using some steel wool, something else to get it off of there. And then get as much off as you can. Hopefully, all of it, ideally. Yeah. You should get all of it off. And then what you do is you put it into the oven at 500 degrees. Let it sit there for like 30-ish minutes. So all of the water, 30 minutes to an hour. So all the water can come out. Then you take the pan out. Please use iron mitt or like um <laughs> you know oven mitts something so you're not going to burn Burn's. shit out of yourself yeah. and then uh you put an entire light layer of oil so like canola oil or something like that over the entirety oh, shut up extra virgin olive oil okay okay relax oil continue actually you probably should use like <laughs> Dude, there's a big difference between oil like well, I, know, be, but I, I didn't using, say sesame oil I you should oil. be using like a canola oil for this though like you need something that not can withstand really high temperatures yeah. especially for a long time and yes. you don't want your oil to burn on the pan, and then your whole house is going to smell like an oil fire. Yeah. Or worse, yeah. catch on fire. I wouldn't you know? run to olive oil. That thing is too precious. So if you're going to use an oil, make sure it has a very, very, very high smoke. Avocado point. oil, for example. You can use that. That one's iffy, but you can. Yeah. yeah. So you coat, you coat the pan with this oil, right? <laughs> We're stuck on oil. Stick, right, it anyway. back in the, stick it back in the oven. Gets a first coat of seasoning on. You leave it in there for, I think it was two to three hours. And then you do that four to six times. Whatever you feel like is mm -hmm. appropriate. And that's how you can create like a traditional non-stick surface on your pan, right? Yeah. 3M, or more specifically DuPont, through the process of creating Teflon, introduced or implemented the C8 chemical, mm -hmm. which had some non-stick properties to it. And by extension, as we've already mentioned, when you cook in that, if it goes above a certain heat, which most people will have no idea when it gets above that certain heat, yeah. the C8 starts to kind of loosen up a little bit and gets attached to the food. 
which Ooh. therefore gets into your bloodstream and can cause a whole myriad of problems. Yeah. So every meal comes with a good dose of cancer-causing chemical. Mm. Mm. Delicious, huh? Finger licking good. Zesty. Yeah. yeah, so uh, can you scroll down a bit, please? No, I really cannot. I'm so offended. It's a little... Oh, You're never asked, mind. Go up. Actually, dude, we don't scroll anymore. We swipe down. <laughs> we swiped. <laughs> good Lord. Come on, get with the system, dude. Say, get That's with tough. it. Yeah, dude. but yeah, they didn't even fix the shit. They basically, yeah, but, which is why, like, why? The, I mean, they were struck with a bunch of lawsuits. They had to pay a lot of money. It's well known in the news. Yeah, but, but even then, they created a different chemical um, that had was more it Gen cancer. Something what? I think it was like Gen X or something like that. Which isn't that us? <laughs> not me. What What is Gen X? No, never mind. Know, whatever. Anyway, yeah, I'm not. Matter. I'm not sure what the chemical is called. <laughs> isn't that us? I don't know. No, I mean like our generation. But they've yeah, done yeah. studies on rats with that other chemical and it's produced the same health effects. Mm -hmm. The same uh, negative health impact. Well. You see, it's bad enough already that it's um, in our food, technically. Because we do, we, like Logan said, we don't know um, how hot our pans really get when we're cooking, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's even worse that you're taking this toxic shit and just Dumping it into water systems, dude. And getting away with it. Poisoning the rivers for God yeah. knows how long. And then even worse is that we know till this day that it's still in our pans and we continue to use it. We, we should just have a thing where it's commonly known, like seasoning your pan. But that takes work. It does take work. <laughs> but people don't want to... People <laughs> so don't you don't want to work, work, so... It's like either work, work for or it or cancer. cancer. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Which one do you want? Wow, that's uh, a great scale. Easier. I'll go with that one. But yeah, one of the, one of the really <laughs> messed up one of the really messed up accounts from this uh, yeah. from the story and movie is that they had pregnant women working their Teflon line, and uh, all of a sudden they basically you know of course these companies don't care so they one of these or a few of these women gave birth to children mm -hmm. um, and they ended up having really serious birth effects such as. Um, what cleft lip, missing nose, one nostril, missing nose, so, some crazy, insane stuff. Oh, so like it's that. like something very apparent and noticeable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and Man, um, it's beyond the mind, right there, dude. Here's here's the most. Yeah. Here's the evil part. Mm -hmm. Even though they willingly knew, willingly knew about the pregnant women and the, and the health effects, after they took all of the pregnant women off of the line, eventually they put them back onto the line. Like that's a different. Kind I mean, of well, stuff. it was back then. I, I can. It was already messed up. The freaking labor laws and. <laughs> so this but. actually raises a lot of questions. Yeah. The first one being, why was this allowed to happen? Right. It wasn't just like oh everybody was like all fine and dandy with it. Right. There's there's actually a little bit of um. Blame to be thrown around, if you want to put it that way. Mm -hmm. So back in the seventies, those tests that you were talking about were conducted. And they were deemed, or the test that 3M, the company that produces the chemical, came out with a statement saying, yeah, this is extremely dangerous. It's very, you're going to have a very high likelihood of developing cancer if you work with the chemical or if you use the product consistently in the terms of cooking and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Now, when they put that, uh, that research out, that paper, yeah, nobody gave a shit. Literally nobody... No red flags were raised. Nothing was wrong. And then around 2006, there was a Toxic Substance Control Act that penalized 3M $1.5 million for 244 violations. Which, and which, by the way, isn't even a slap on the wrist. That's, that's like that. That's like a, hey, don't do that again equivalent in terms yeah. of penalty. Hey, go sit in your corner for two seconds. They had 244 violations of one specific substances act. And they only had to pay out 1.5 mil. Mm. Holy shit. At that point, they'd probably produced hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars from selling that product or that chemical specifically and other products involved with that. In the 1940s, by the way. Which yep. is a shit ton of money. And then... And I think, I think the, the actual movie time, uh, time frame took place within the 80s or 90s. I'm not sure, though. Hmm. But 1945 was when they essentially made C8. Teflon, what you doing, man? What are you doing, 3M? Or what about our government, the EPA? Like, it was the EPA, not even the FDA. 
like stepped in and said, hey, you you should probably be careful with this shit. It's getting into the environment. <laughs> it's causing a lot of problems. The FDA never one stepped and been like, yeah, this is a major health hazard like for the entire populace. Yeah, and, and, and like the thing is, it's backed like by 3M, which is a chemical company. They're known for this stuff. And it's fine because you can produce chemicals, but it's how you use it. <laughs> and I do not suggest using it on pans whatsoever no it's just um it's a complete it's just it's evil there's no other way to describe than it's evil whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. studies show a hundred thousand plus people have died from teflon no, i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> probably actually probably uh, it's maybe. possible or at least no uh, I, I think it's i think it's at least they have um that. illnesses that are linked to it and then, oh yeah, you can list off all the six different diseases that it's highly Teflon correlated to. chemical is in the blood of 99% of Americans? Ouch. Wow. That's what I mentioned, yeah. Based off of their research. That's hard-hitting, dude. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sorry, according to this paper, they had conducted, when I say they, I mean um, DuPont and 3M conducted tests in the 70s that said it was dangerous. But then somewhere down the line... In the mid to early 2000s, a, what was it, 343 million dollar settlement for poisoning six water districts mm -hmm. and causing a lot of severe health uh, problems due to the exposure to C8. And uh, DuPont apparently ordered another test and they were confident that the results would prove C8 was safe. Yet, historically wow. speaking, they had already known the negative health effects of it. That's insanity. They did the studies. They knew the results. They knew well and clear what what that shit would do to the population. Yeah. But they just suppressed the studies. They just hid them. Okay, well, you know what? At least they're getting some... They're getting a little bit of what's coming to them. Because in 2017... Was Gen X. Yeah. They paid out $671 million to settle thousands of lawsuits with but it's, people. But it doesn't solve the root cause of the problem. No, it doesn't at all. They're still making billions, I'm sure, on Gen X. So what the fuck did we even get out of this? Nothing. We got a study that shows. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, this is bad. Cool. Yeah, no one acknowledges <laughs> let's, it. Let's dude. double down on it. Just leave it. Cool. Yeah, just leave it. For sure. But yeah, I mean, this, this might sound like a bunch of facts to you, like a bunch of boring facts maybe, but when you watch the movie Dark Waters, it, it gives you personal accounts. It, it really strikes you at an emotional level and i love that name too dark waters well yeah because the chemicals were getting in the water yeah i know <laughs> really because <laughs> i mean they could have just called it c8 rated r then that sounds like an energy drink <laughs> yeah well Get that's what i was c8 that's what i was bang. thinking and that maybe not trust c4 pre-workout too because no, C8 yeah. is the spiritual successor to C4. Yeah. It's, uh, it's double of <laughs> everything. Spiritual successor? Double the amount That's of That's exactly caffeine, what I was thinking. Double the yeah. amount of BCAs. Oh, man. Double the amount oh, of ripped. cardiac arrest. <laughs> double the amount of gains <laughs> per can. Oh, uh, yeah. No, but to summarize everything we just said, um, not only did these chemical companies not give a shit about public health whatsoever, your government also failed to care about your well-being yeah despite a mountain of evidence proving how dangerous this substance is they let it parade through american life for years mm -hmm. even up to present day it just now has a different name and actually is considered a worse chemical so you know get mad at your government <laughs> if anyone else. i think the scariest part is that what are they doing now what kind of new chemicals are these companies coming up with that we just can't. C12. I mean, sure, we have new laws and stuff, but it's not going to stop them. Well, you know, C12. I think, I think we it. might have. <laughs> C64. <laughs> <laughs> what, dude? What? Does it stand for Cancer 8? <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, Alex Jones, tune it down. <laughs> <laughs> we have so far, I think, five segments of that X Files shit. <laughs> <laughs> We keep it alive. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the scientists keep the aliens alive. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. We're not going down that <laughs> no, rabbit okay, hole, okay. right? Okay, continue. No, you said, uh, what are these companies creating? And that actually um, reminded mm -hmm. me of a conversation we had a couple episodes back about the access that the American populace has to lab equipment 
Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it's cheap by any means. In fact, a lot of it's actually pretty expensive, but for minimal amounts of money and you can have a semi rudimentary understanding of either chemistry or biochemistry, you can create some pretty scary shit in your garage. Yeah. And there's not a whole lot of regulation in terms of what's going on, how you're making shit, because how, how are you supposed to regulate that? You can't. You have no. to have someone literally watching you constantly. All the time. Yeah. And that's uh, not so, that's not a path we're trying to go down right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole bunch of contradict or not contradictions, but just things to be fearful of Yeah, in that field. It's like not just these big companies. You have to think about specialized interest of the individual. Like what is this purpose? This person's a purpose for making X, Y, and Z, whatever it is in their garage. Or what are they mm -hmm. trying to make with these ingredients, you know? Yeah. Like uh, one of my favorite channels on YouTube, and I wish I could remember the guy's name, but he just uh, does, it's a chemistry channel. Mm -hmm. And he just makes a whole bunch of different reactions, explains how to do stuff. Like in one episode, if I remember correctly, he made um, moonshine out of toilet paper. It what? turns out that, yeah, you can break down um, the materials of toilet paper if it's a specific brand and they use like these particular chemicals huh. and agents within it. All you have to do is add a couple different ingredients in a very specific way. And then it gets reduced down to moonshine moonshine, or like a kind of rough version of ethanol. What? That's wild. Yeah. He does stuff like that. He also showed this um, other really crazy reaction where it's, um, what's the word for it? Brutal? No, it's, it's fluctuating. <laughs> it fluctuates in color, but there's a specific name for it that I'm blanking on where if you put, if you mix this, um, a whole bunch of chemicals together, right? Yeah. There's a reaction that's going on involving um, iodine, where when it's at a very peak level in the reaction, mm -hmm. it'll um, cause the reaction to become clear. Okay. Or relatively clear, almost as clear as water. And then as the concentrates start to rise and it maxes out, all of a sudden, the entire thing turns black, like instantaneously. Hmm. Like you blink and it is now black. Wow. Because the iodine activated with some other agent that was in there, or chemical, whatever. And then it turned black. And then after a while, it starts to dissipate with this mixing. And then it goes to clear again. And it'll just keep doing that. Black to clear, black to clear. It's a really cool channel. But my point is, that dude has a degree in chemistry. He yeah. knows what he's talking about. He's educated within the field. And a lot of people don't have that <laughs> education. And it's just a bunch of like back alley shit. For example, the, um, what was it, the Anarchist Cookbook? Haven't heard of it. So one the of the uh, anarchist cookbook that sounds like a like a weapon of a book. Are you aware of <laughs> what that is? The anarchist cookbook, I believe, is the name. What is the what is the goal of the book? It was one of the um, first documents that was spread throughout the earliest version of the internet back in the seventies. And some people like to claim that this was the original purpose of the internet. It was definitely not. It was used for. Um, colleges to communicate back and forth with one another that yeah. was like the original intention also military application but this anarchist cookbook teaches you how to do a whole bunch of crazy shit in your garage for example how to turn gasoline into napalm and then make a essentially a delivery vessel i'm Holy going to call shit. it to throw the napalm out and essentially make a flamethrower in your garage Damn. so it's a cookbook for terrorists um I think it was mainly used for soldiers and like the primary purpose was if you were down on your luck cornered, you know, you might have find something useful in this book. Yeah. And it teaches you how to do stuff like make underwater um, fuses like and shit like that out of pretty rudimentary stuff. And mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure that's banned on Amazon. Yeah. But the reason <laughs> I even brought it up was, you know, you just get your hands on that. And I don't think it was banned on Amazon. I think you can still buy it today. Really? Yeah. Very interesting. Teaches you how to do a whole bunch of stuff, how to scale barbed wire, like random. My point is, if you can get access to information like that, which that book came out in the 70s, early 70s, mm -hmm. imagine the crazy shit you can make in your garage with minimal equipment and limited expertise. The scary things you could assemble. So, yeah. in this, it, like I said earlier, it's not these companies that you have to worry about all the time. It's usually individuals. Terrorist organizations. Exactly. Anthrax, you know. all that stuff. And uh, actually, speaking of napalm in the 70s, 
I think the next thing that we're going to talk about is Agent Orange, actually, and not just specifically Agent Orange, but all of the agents that they used throughout the entirety of the Vietnam War as a means to, you know, it was primarily used for deforestation and crop, uh, what was it, uh, crop destruction. Dude, yeah. I was shocked when I found out that there's a an entire list, not mm -hmm. just Agent Orange. So for those that don't know what Agent Orange is, it's um like a very commonly known chemical used throughout the Vietnam War as a means to deforest the jungle so our soldiers could actually see what was happening. Yeah. Now, Agent Orange is the most popular out of all of these agents. However, there was a considered the Agent Rainbow, so to speak. So there's Agent Green, Pink, Purple, Blue, White, and then the most popular being Orange. And there were some pretty detrimental health effects. To come along with these, yeah, used primarily for the Vietnam War, 1961 to 71, and up to four million uh, Vietnamese uh, citizens, Viet Cong soldiers, U.S. soldiers were experienced or were came into contact with Agent Orange, hmm. and it was a large problem for a whole number of reasons. What I don't understand is basically go up a little bit. Yeah, every single one of them. Essentially, has the same purpose. Yeah, except so wh for one. why do they why do they need multiple versions? Uh, some might not be as effective as they want them to be. I'm going to guess green through blue uh, did not do very well, considering the fact that for Agent Green, there's only twenty thousand gallons. Pink seventy two. By the way, Vietnam got absolutely fucked with all of these. Oh, we're, it's we're just millions of gallons dumped. We're getting there, but Agent Orange has over 11 million gallons, nearly oh. 11 and a half. God damn. And that was just rained down on the people of Vietnam, who at the time didn't, or at least earlier in the war, didn't understand the effects as of what would come down the line. Mm -hmm. Severe genetic deformations in their children, so high rates of cancer, pot, I mean, high death rates if you come in contact with it. Mm -hmm. Your chance of dying goes up astonishingly so. Wait, so the government of Vietnam says as many as 3 million people have suffered illnesses. That's true. And in fact, they're actually still dealing with the negative repercussions of Agent Orange today. Still spread throughout the jungle. So that's a problem. They say 1 million people, or when I say they, I mean the Red Cross of Vietnam, estimates that up to 1 million people are disabled or have health problems as a result of Agent Orange contamination. And that's in... Yeah, but I find it kind of interesting that every single one of them was jungle deforestation. That was the purpose of it. Except for one of them, yeah, one it was, of them was crop, crop, but it's same, same, same difference. thing. Yeah, but I wonder what was going on in their head at that time. Well, I I imagine it was because they all had a purpose at a different kind of time. That's true. Well, nineteen sixty six to seventy two, we can agree they didn't care about the environment or the people. Yeah, we, well, it's a war. Well, the the environment was not on the list of yeah. concerns Bro, for the war, U.S. government. War was different back then. Well, Vietnam was a test ground, really, more than anything else for the United States. We had a whole bunch of new tech, and we're like, all right, let's see this shit. Like, let's see it work. We got to <laughs> see how it works yeah. and, what, like, where the problems are with all of our new well, gear. What and do you know? It worked from the first minute, dude. It, I don't, In the worst way I think you could possible. argue it never worked, period. I don't know. I feel like almost everybody that came out of Vietnam was fucked up one way or another, whether it be financially, yeah. mentally, physically. There was a... Uh, yeah, it did not go very well <laughs> at all. It was a clusterfuck of a of a war because I mean, you essentially have the mega superpower of the United States going up against uh, the communist backed Northern Viet Cong. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And here's so: Have you ever heard the term "home field advantage"? Home field advantage? In yeah. The context yes. of war? Yeah. No, just in general. At, yeah. Like the home yeah. field. Yeah, yeah. I usually hear it in like uh, football stadiums. Exactly. Like right. And so what that means is you have, at least in football, you have like the um, the fan bases on your side and that's supposed to give you an energy boost and intimidate yeah. the other crowd that comes mm -hmm. over. However, in terms of Vietnam, the home field advantage for the northern Viet Cong was that they knew the land, like the back of their mm -hmm. hand. They had and lived it, there for generations. Yeah. They understood every nook and cranny, every tree branch, not literally, but. And what made them so And if you don't know, it was obviously a land of jungle land. Yes. Very, very heavily forested. Completely opposite of the United States. Exactly. And does yeah. that tie into guerrilla warfare? Yes. Yeah. Heavily. 
the same tactic that won us the uh, Revolutionary War mm. was the same tactic that helped the Northern Viet Cong fend off the United States. We mm. just knew the land. Mm -hmm. We knew, or sorry, in this case, the Viet Cong knew the land. They set up strategic bunkers that in some cases spread for miles underground, entire cityscapes of tens of thousands of people wow. living in these bunkers underneath. So yeah. while our tanks and shit and soldiers are walking up above, they know exactly where they are. Yeah. If communications in, or communication lines in these tunnels saying, okay, they're here, they're there, make sure that um, soldiers that are racked up in this area, they get shifted on over there, yeah. then they pop and, up. Yeah. Once shit goes crazy, they dip down, run back, and then they actually had things implemented within the tunnels that would cause them to destruct and cave in. So the U.S. soldiers, once they were scouting out these tunnels, are like, okay, well, there's nowhere else to go. It stops here. But it didn't always. It kept going. Sometimes for if you want yeah, to visualize it, a couple um, hundreds of feet. Or it kind of reminds me of ant farms. Yes, like when you yeah. see ants dig strategic tunnels and everything. No, that's actually exactly what it's like. Yeah, yeah. and they had the advantage of um, their own unique uh, camouflage as well. What do you mean? Jungle boy outfits, just fucking leafed Jungle up. Jungle boy, <laughs> just leafed up in Jungle pure green. <laughs> The OG ghillie suit. Can you yeah, imagine how terrifying it is to, to fight in a fucking jungle? Well, especially as an American. Like, could you imagine going from, um, like, Indiana? Yeah. You know, where there's really not... It's just open scapes. Yeah, or yeah. What's, a, what's a really flat state? Like, Wyoming? Uh, sure. Wyoming, Louisiana. What's, like, a... What's the pancake state? I'm trying to remember which one that is. Is it Arkansas? Or, I feel like Arkansas. Arkansas. Let's one. just say Arkansas. Yeah. Okay. Flat. Hell yeah. of hell of a lot of corn. <laughs> mm -hmm. You just, just see flat. the horizon twenty four seven all the time. Yeah, right. There's not a huge elevation change, mm -hmm. and then you go into the jungle, mountains, dense foliage. It rains all the time. You don't know where the enemy's coming from. They could be and around you twenty four seven, and you would have no idea. Mm -hmm. You don't know if it's mud or quicksand. Home base dude, dude, dude. where you sleep is not safe yeah because for you to assume it's safe you have already given the enemy the advantage mm -hmm. in that moment yeah and the second that you feel like it's okay they're gonna run in cause some hell blow some shit up and then get out before anybody even really realizes what the hell's going on mm -hmm. that's their home field advantage it's terrifying and you, right? you're not even forget you forget enemies too you got other enemies to worry about panthers <laughs> panthers <laughs> Panthers are, is your go <laughs> Are panthers even in Vietnam? I don't know. Dude. I doubt it. It's a jungle. You just just assume it's a, that there's you know, there's some, it's a jungle. There's some killer animals in there. I'm sure diseases are are more more of a problem than Yeah, panthers. but think about it. It was such a like they had the advantage because of all the nature crap that we were not used to, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It was completely different. Yeah. Now, the reason why we came up with Agent Orange was to try to mitigate that home field advantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We try to diminish it a little bit, you know, just as a means for us to see who we're shooting at. Like that was kind of the philosophy, right? And they didn't care so much about the adverse health effects that were going to come along mm -hmm. with it because it's war. They don't really give a shit. You yeah. know, that's not their uh, primary directive. So they just let this shit run rampant through Vietnam, infecting plants, people, their own soldiers without really giving a shit whatsoever yeah ruined an entire plot of land for decades literally mm -hmm. uh some would argue certain areas are still ruined to this day you know and fucked yeah. up an entire generation of people passing on now mutated genes and yeah. other bad stuff onto their children which is just ugh. what other examples of uh fuckery do we have um i, I forget would, about that i would one. love yeah. to talk about the diesel gate let's do it let's do it should we Volkswagen. that's that's a great one yeah diesel gate in terms of corporate scandals is mwah. it creme is creme de la creme it is voluptuous it's my favorite scandal in terms of corporate fuckery now where do we start uh diesel gate it involves volkswagen yeah right and this was back in was it 20 13 2014 ish was, was it when they got called out i believe so i can double check that that's why we got the computer yes that's true when was sounds like it's around that time but 
When was Dieselgate? Was oh, it 2008? 2008. Yep. I I thought it was way later than 2008. Oh, when oh, put when did Dieselgate break? Yeah, that's 2015. Okay, that go. makes more sense yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. 2008 is actually when it started because yeah. that was when they started manufacturing that specific um inline four diesel engine. Yeah. Or their diesel turbo line that came yeah. later as well. But so Volkswagen, come on. One of the biggest, at least for us, international um, automotive manufacturers. Exactly. It's the, for if you couldn't afford a BMW. Hey, you we know, got all the power right here for you, cheap. You know about the Bug. You know about the Jetta. You've heard of the GTI. Yes. You you know you Volkswagen. You see hundreds of VWs a day. Yeah. You know Volkswagen, mm -hmm. right? It's inbred into American pop culture. I mean, they're incredibly popular. Now, Dieselgate, as a means to be more eco-friendly, Volkswagen started pushing heavily for these new diesel cars that they were coming out with, mm -hmm. that inline Ford engine that I just mentioned. They claimed that these diesel cars were much more fuel efficient. They got pretty good gas mileage What for what they were. The turbo models were a fun alternative. You got a little bit less of good gas mileage, but it was still better. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, diesel mileage, I guess. But it's still better than, you know, the standard cars that you could get, right? Yeah. Like from the average lineup of vehicles. And here's where they fucked up. Here's why Dieselgate is called Dieselgate. In the testing of these vehicles, right, Volkswagen implemented something that they called a, what was it, a something device a defeat device yeah it was a defeat device and they implemented these devices onto their cars so whenever they were going through environmental protection agency testing or u.s customs or sorry u.s um environmental testings and stuff like that yeah they would have this um, nitrous oxide filter in the car which diesel when it's burned produces a higher amount of that than traditional gasoline so they need a special hmm. filter to addition or to filter out this additional amount of nitrous oxide and during the test they figured that they figured out that if they were to burn more fuel or essentially run more fuel through the filter they would be able to pass regulations testing but in order to do that it would comp it would severely depower the car yeah make it much less fun to drive and actually was more fuel inefficient yeah by doing that <laughs> so once the testing was done with, they got those testing numbers saying, oh, yeah, we passed the safety test. We, our emissions are low. They're safe. And we're good to go. But once they got out of that lot, like literally the second that they drove out, then the car gets activated again. And wow. now it's the fun version of it. It doesn't pass through that filter. It allows for better airflow out of the back of the exhaust, thereby improving performance. But also the safety aspect of it or the emissions are horrendous <laughs> are drastically worse yeah how much worse so is it just asking. safety in terms of emission yes. production yes okay like it doesn't create any other yeah. safety hazard for the actual driver the emissions we're just talking are about the problem okay we have yes. a certain set of standards that we cannot break and yes. what they're doing is they're lying about it exactly classic fuckery. that's the most dumbed down version they quite literally put something into their car the mm. defeat device which when they went through EPA testing or American emissions testing yeah, would cause it so that it would have to use more fuel, so be less fuel efficient, and then it would push air through that nitrous oxide filter harder yeah. or the exhaust through it. Exactly. And that would limit the um, performance and also yeah. the emissions would be lower. It's like well. me getting tested for COVID, but then I take you with me and I write down my information, but then they swab your nose. <laughs> Literally. Wait, are you saying you got COVID? No. <laughs> Come on, dude. COVID got me. I don't got COVID. COVID got where's, the... Where's my mask? <laughs> where's my mask? Oh, you, now you trust 3M? <laughs> oh, I just, I just fucking connected those dots. That, that's a good one. <laughs> Thank you, sir. But, but, here's the thing. But. How much more Big but. emissions were being pushed out as a result of the device being turned off? Right, the car that mm -hmm. we drive every mm -hmm. day has the device turned off. Emissions, depending on the vehicle, were up to 40 times higher 
than the standard level or the accepted level of emissions. I was expecting you to say four times higher. No. Not 30. 40. Times. Some, 40 times? Some vehicles got up to 40 yeah. times higher than the allotted amount of emissions to come out of the back of a diesel car. Yeah. And this is nitrous oxide primarily is what people are concerned about. Mm -hmm. CO2, obviously bad. But for these diesel engines, as I mentioned earlier, they push out a much higher volume of nitrous oxide. Yes. Than very much traditional so. car. Than Dude, traditional uh, you can gas smell car. it, bro. You can smell it. Legit. Yeah. And also the uh, diesel fuel, if I remember correctly, or at least the emissions, sorry, they stay lower on the ground mm -hmm. because it's a denser uh, gas coming out of the back rather than just the traditional CO2 and whatever else comes out of the back of a tailpipe of a gasoline powered car. Yeah. So it actually stays on the level of where people are standing, right? Oh, shit. Which some could deem if your car actually passes emissions in a not shitty way arguably is safer mm -hmm. because you're not letting all of that ozone and co2 go up into the atmosphere and that causes the holes to burn which lets more radiation in in forms of sunlight and stuff like that and causes more problems we're not going to get into that right now mm -hmm. the thing is volkswagen lied and those nitrous oxide or those 40 times higher than you know legally allowed at least in the united states um leads to higher rates of bronchitis and higher rates of respiratory illnesses mm. and also respiratory cancers. Okay. That's, yeah. Okay. That's so that's long -term a long-term stuff. Big problem. Yeah, that's yeah. huge. And they were doing this for years from like 2008 until 2015. They were pushing these cars out. And on top of that, of all diesel cars sold, or at least pedestrian diesel vehicles sold in the United States, Volkswagen had a 70% share of that market. Yeah. 70% of all diesel vehicles sold for commercial applications. Sorry, um, public applications, rather, not commercial or privatized interest. Mm -hmm. Was Volkswagen pushing out these highly toxic vehicles for years and being bought up by the millions? Because in theory, diesel fuel around the country is usually cheaper than gas. And on top of that, a little bit more eco-friendly, depending on who you ask. Mm-hmm. And the turbo cars were fun. They're little zippy. Yeah. Like, little Ricky yeah, racers. Yeah. You know, I mean, they didn't rev high, but you, that wasn't yeah, the point. You, they had you torque. Can, you can feel the German. Yeah. They just had torque. You and it was yeah. Kind of zip. You're like, ooh, this is pretty fun. Yeah. You, you can know? zip like, around. Yeah. For yeah. sure. And it just poisoning the American populace for years. How were, uh, how were they punished? They had to have a pretty large payout and recall every single one of the diesel vehicles. Yeah. Okay. Which I'm really glad nice. they didn't just ask for a payout like no, you actually have to recall the cars yeah, so. yeah. That's, a, that's a good punishment because that's more money on their end i believe if i remember correctly it was in the billions what they had to pay out yeah. and on top of that they needed to recall every vehicle which was an, from <laughs> more millions every diesel vehicle from 2008 to 2015 yeah. well i do have some relationship advice for everyone all liars and cheaters eventually get caught it's true. Timer no matter what you are, whether you're a car dealer, you're a fucking car manufacturer, or a stupid bitch. But yeah, <laughs> like the salmon in the stream. Eventually, you're gonna get caught. <laughs> exactly. Wahoo! Yeah. So yeah, they. You know what's um also kind of crazy though, is mm. even though they called for the recall, some people were just like, "No, I like it. The car's yeah, fun." Yeah. Inevitably, yeah. some people are gonna keep the car. Yeah cars and so now when you look at volkswagen i don't know if you pay attention to anything that they do their advertising their current business model but have you noticed something that they're pushing heavily in not specifically but i would imagine it's something about honesty well and emissions uh it's kind of related to emissions okay would you like to guess um, if I had to guess, I would probably guess Chrysler. What? No, I said, do you know, do you what? know, do you know what they're trying to do as a result? It's like, oh, I thought you said what other car manufacturers. What are they no, trying no, no, to do no, with no. their marketing right now? Yeah. Like what, what have they changed in their marketing since the 2015 thing or their business structure? Um, one thing I noticed was their interior. They're just marketing the shit out of interior, not really how it drives. Like they're trying to escape from... Yeah, from uh, past, anything that has to do with any engine. <laughs> Interesting guess. Yeah. Not at all what I was thinking, but... Sure, what were you thinking? I, I'm sure it's not wrong. What is it? Electric. 
Yeah, yeah. There's no other That's manufacturer right now mm -hmm. that is pushing harder for electric vehicles than Volkswagen. So they're essentially trying to make up for, for their past. Yeah. By just going in the opposite direction. By leaning heavily in the yeah. opposite direction. Yeah. Okay. And that rings through throughout all of the other companies that they own. For example, Porsche. We had mm. the, the Mission E, which later turned out to be the, the Taycan. Which or is the, oh, the Taycan. Just a, just a beautiful mm, The Taycan vehicle. Turbo S, great car. Its biggest problem is it has kind of a shit range, but at the same time, it's a sports car, so what did you expect? Yeah. You know? And then also look at Audi. E-tron. That's their whole new movement. Do you mm -hmm. think that's by coincidence? Or do you think it's that they probably shared turbo-powered engines with Volkswagen? They definitely mm -hmm. shared that. Because yeah. Volkswagen owns them, and it was a pretty good diesel engine, so fuck it. Put it in all of their cars. That's fascinating. It just goes to show, like, it, it comes down to, I think it comes down to the market. These companies will adjust once the market demands for something more sustainable and, and transparency and honesty. Well, that reminds me of something that I was reading about earlier, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew this or not, but did you know that Toyota was partnered with Tesla for, like, years? Were you aware of that? Might have heard no. of it, but no. Toyota, Toyota bought a 2.5% share or stake in Tesla, right? Mm -hmm. They owned 2.5% of the company, and then Tesla was going to help Toyota manufacture electric vehicles. Ooh. Like, that was part of the whole deal. Yeah. And then they came out with the RAV4 EV, which sold like shit. Because it was like, it only got like 100 miles of range. What do you expect and from it wasn't a RAV4? But it wasn't fun to drive and it got shit range. So it yeah. was like, why would you even spend that much money on a RAV4? You know? <laughs> and then eventually the business or the the attempted, I wouldn't even call it a merger, but whatever. It just fell through and Toyota backed out. And then um, the guy who owns Toyota, I forget his name, I apologize, is um, he was talking about there's a push for EVs to take over Japan right now. Yeah. And he's like, it's not going to happen. Really? We'll just call And him. you're like, well, why would you say that? Or obviously this guy's saying that because, you know, he owns a company that sells and manufactures gasoline powered cars. Mm -hmm. But according to his estimation, to make the entire nation of Japan fully dependent on electric vehicles, it would cost somewhere in the neighborhood of 185 to 385, was it million or billion? trying to remember i feel like it's billion it was something ridiculous because the the emphasis that he put on wasn't necessarily creating the cars it was updating the infrastructure within japan not to say yeah. that they have a bad infrastructure there's a solid compared to a lot of places in yeah, the world but especially a, here yeah just an update yeah, yeah but you the amount of electricity you would have to generate for that a costly update at least in the beginning large. and we don't really have a means to produce that much energy in a safe way right now yeah. i mean some people would say what about nuclear energy you really want to tell that to japan nope after fukushima you, you want to go down that route yeah they're no. not too interested in nuclear power <laughs> right now solar uh it's mm. probably not going to work for them yeah um wind maybe like possibly i doubt it i don't think they really have the real estate for wind energy wave energy um it's a great idea, but so far it hasn't been proven to work. So yeah, does it work in practically? Not so just in theory. I don't know how that one's going to work out. So what does that leave left over? They're just going to stick with their the model they've always had, traditional methods, yeah. which is producing more CO two by burning coal or natural gases, yeah, or something like that, along those lines. And so he said, in the process of trying to be eco friendly and making all these electric vehicles. You are therefore going to make the environment worse because just for the tiny nation of Japan to make all of those batteries, the entire electric grid has to be updated. Mm -hmm. So the, Yikes. the hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of miles of cables that are going to be needed. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're upgrading the energy grid, why not just upgrade the uh, internet grid? If you're already going to tear yeah, up the streets, <laughs> yeah, you might as well spend that. So there's an extra insane cost that you're going to want to put out there yeah every little move is an insane cost yeah so the thing the primary problem with electric vehicles right now is one infrastructure two the batteries making those eco-friendly and three how you're going to produce that energy mm -hmm. that 
it, it's not time for it because you know that I think um, when time comes, you know that, well, obviously money is not, ne is never the problem. It's just how inefficient is it or how, how detrimental is it to be using these kind of chemicals? To yeah. just, you know, and generate the, this update. <laughs> and in yeah, the eyes of the generally. guy that started Toyota, it would actually be worse for the environment by a large margin if we just yeah. spent all of this money and went all in on... Inevitably, the, the technology will catch up, but right now it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, it does not yeah. make yeah. sense. We, we still need a... Yeah. Um, and, like, we're, we're all excited for new batteries to start coming out. Dude. We want the new batteries. Yeah. I'm not against electric vehicles. I, I actually want one. I just don't think the batteries are up to par yet yeah they're, they're not. not they're they weigh tons they're fucking like tesla. you gotta have so many of them just to run a car yeah and tesla's the only one that can make a battery that's worth a shit mm -hmm. it's like the mustang um or the mustang ev whatever that thing is the new ford they have a new mustang ev yeah it's the mustang um but it, it's, it's like a, a crossover suv but they call it the mustang it's by ford oh yeah and, it's we it looks weird but the thing is apparently the interior one of the best EVs on the market. It's built very well. Mm -hmm. Solid construction. It's fun to drive. Rear wheel drive. Wow. Okay. That's good. But it only gets like 200 some odd miles of range. What? It's almost nothing compared to other. No. Oh, what do you mean others? Tesla's like the only one right now in my mind. Nobody Tesla even. No one okay. holds a candle in terms of range and fun to drive. Yeah. When in it comes Tesla. to EVs. Yeah. Tesla still reigns supreme. Well, they better be. That's their only. Uh niche so well the thing to keep your eyes open for is apparently apple is coming out with an electric car which they've been coming out with a car for like 20 years now yeah, that's what I'm but thinking. they say they're going to come out with an ev yeah. which is self-driving but the thing that you should really be interested in is they claim the battery technology will <laughs> <You> love... <laughs> this is just a giant airpod <laughs> honestly it, it imagine an airpod hitting a corner <laughs> This is an no. AirPod laying flat, and it's just moving. No, where you sit is the where you sits the round part, and then like that little side part where all the subs are. That's the door to get in and out. <laughs> and then what they do is they have an expert come to your house and transform your garage into an AirPod case. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> the garage opens up exactly how the AirPod, <laughs> and it's mag safe. You, like right, right it's as you ridiculous. get too close, you just feel boom. <laughs> <and locks in. laughs> Okay, so we have the example so of VW stupid. lying yeah. to the entire nation. That's what I was picturing. But producing anyway. fuckery. Yeah, that's funny. Whoa, it's, it's really toasty in here yeah, today, dude. Dude, it is hot. I don't know what happened, but it yeah. got really hot really quick. Like the heater's on. Yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on. It's probably all these Let's, let's run through some, some other ones. That it's probably we all the, the fire that we're speaking right now. There's the, the waste truth. management one. The fire! The waste management scandal. Would so you like to speak on management. the waste management Enron... The world calm. Tycho. It's amazing how many there are. <laughs> it's it's astonishing. Well, if there's if there's a way to make money in a corporation, illegal or not, somebody's going to figure out a way to do it. And how to how long can you hold on to that scam for? Yeah. And let's like let's a, focus on the Enron one. And I feel like a perfect example of that is Enron. So well, I like this infographic because it explains it very simply. Yeah. Very simply. So Enron scandal is a Houston-based. Commodities, Energy, and Service Corporation. So, would well, you like damn? Me, would you like me to explain? Can we just read the number of how <laughs> how much the shareholders well, have lost? <laughs> should, we should, I just want to mention that first. We should, I was going to say we should hold off. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Okay. okay we'll on. give you guys some time <laughs> we'll, before we say it, the number. Just let the thought marinate yeah. for a second. But let's explain what happened, right? Sure. So we have Jeff Skilling and Ken Lay. Yeah, the CEOs. They sound like assholes. The Enron company. Yes. So Enron was a merger between two separate, two separate energy companies. Yeah. Right. And Jeff Skilling, Ken Lay got together and they formed Enron mm -hmm. as a new energy company. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they primarily started with um like new energies. So when I say new energy, it's they've been around forever, but just making new energy grids. So it's like more oil digging places or new mm -hmm. places to generate electricity through coal production whatever right yeah. but they also offered new technologies like that was another part of enron they were at one point deemed i think it was it in 2001 or 2000 1999 something like that they were deemed one of the most uh innovative up-and-coming companies mm -hmm. right 
or large, one of the most innovative companies, period. And um, one of the ideas that they came out with was actually genius and years ahead of its time. Enron partnered with Blockbuster, right? Okay. What the Why the fuck? Why? Wait, exactly. hold on, hold on. VHS, but continue. <laughs> We're coming out with VHS. VHS has some material, has some uh, chemical uh, goody goody. Oh, when I tell you what they were trying to do with yeah. Blockbuster, you're gonna f you're gonna be like, what? Okay. <laughs> Let, so, oh, like Breaking Bad shit. Let's Continue. get there. Let's get there. In a way, yes. Yeah. But <clears throat> why did Enron, this energy company, join up with Blockbuster? Well, Enron wanted to get into the new technology sector. They wanted to bust the block. Exactly. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> ironically they did and i'll explain why it did in a very fucked up way continue no they literally wanted to bust your block up because they wanted to with blockbuster yeah create a new way that you could watch movies at home yeah through the internet you ever heard of netflix yeah they had this idea in the early 90s it's impressive. years before netflix yeah. even impressive came up with their digital streaming platform yep and this was in the year, this was during the years of the internet where everything was slow as shit. Just to pull up a picture on the internet, it was like, eh. Yeah. Eh, and it was not even a megabyte, dude. Eh, yeah. It was like, what, six Kil kilobytes? It, <laughs> God, dude. Everything was pixelated as yeah. shit. Yeah. But they wanted to partner with Blockbuster to create a new digital streaming service, right? And the way that they would do that was they wanted to literally tear up your block and implement new cables, like high speed data transfer cables, which could be used for obviously for searching the internet, but primarily for using this new streaming service that they came out with, mm -hmm. or that they wanted to come out with. Which is way ahead of its time. Way too ahead of its yeah. time. In fact, so ahead of its time, they never even came close to creating the technology to make it possible. Straight up, other companies had to do it. Not even close. And so you may be wondering, where's the scandal in all of this? It's just so far, it sounds like a company that's making okay decisions in terms of the uh, energy sector and then bad decisions in terms of the technology sector. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. The head accountant at Enron figured out a new way that he could value um, his companies or the company he worked for, Enron, the revenue stream. And the way he did this was by starting these companies, right? Mm -hmm. And then he would determine the present day value or the today value. And then he was able to calculate the future value of how much money they could be making in like 10 to 20 years. And then he passed off that revenue that they would be making in 10 to 20 years, money they haven't even gotten close to starting to make yet. He passed that off as their current revenue stream. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, scandal alert. Yep. Scandal alert. <laughs> and then through some of these ventures, some of them got a little bit risky. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they put them into these things called SPVs or specialized vehicles in this instant, instance, right? And what an SPV is, is it's think of it kind of like a small company that your big company starts. And then what you do is you can take all of the bad investments that are wrapped up in this project you don't like. And you can take them off of your balance sheet and put them into the balance sheet of that SPV. Gotcha. And then that really shitty investment that you have, if you can turn that into a business, gets locked up into this SPV. Now that SPV, at least back in the day, you could ask the government for loans, money, stuff like that, right? Investment help, if you want to put it that way. And then the SPVs went belly up. And Enron was like, we're not affiliated with these SPVs. So it was a means for them to take money from the government mm -hmm. and put it into their own pockets. <laughs> that was a big fault. That was a big no-no. Motherfuckers. Yeah. For obvious reasons. And also, after a while, people were wondering why they made so much money relative to how little bit of debt that they had or their debt to equity ratio, which equity being the amount of money you would have if you could liquidate all of your company's assets after paying off any debts that you have, mm -hmm. right? Their debt to equity ratio was astonishingly high. It was stupid not to buy them. Yeah. That's why their stock rose so quickly and so fast. I mean, it went up to $88 a share in a very short period of time for yeah. a company that essentially was doing nothing other than taking on debt 
and then hiding it from their public by putting it into these SPVs. Yeah. And, and that, also valuating their companies at something much higher than it yeah. actually is. So naturally that raises suspicion. Yeah. Yes. Intelligent people start to pick up on these things. Exactly. And then it all started to come tumbling down. Once mm. the, um, if I remember correctly, it was the FTC got involved and a whole bunch of other government agencies, they were getting cracked down on. They lost their um, holding with the New York um, Stock Exchange, Ooh. and their stock plummeted from eighty-eight dollars to fifty cents. Very nice. In a matter of months. Yeah. Why make billions when we can make millions? Millions. And so, there was a lot of money wrapped up in Enron. A lot. In fact, it was such an astounding amount of money that was wrapped up. Hundreds of thousands of people lost jobs, lost financial security. Lost a lot of things as a result of this. Retirement plans. And more Everything. specifically, Dude. 74 billion, with a B, dollars were lost as a result of Enron going oh under. Oh my God. My God. And that's evil. You do not want to be alive after that. Mm -hmm. I should not, no. I, I should not say that. <laughs> you can live but it's just going to take a toll on your brain for a little while. Okay, I'm uh, now that we've gone through a few insane examples of corporate corruption. Uh, I'm curious to see what what the lessons you guys come up with. Like what are the lessons that we can that us and the audience can learn from these you, <laughs> examples of fuckery? I don't know, you cheat, you lose. But also um no one has a sense of I don't know. Like, it, I feel like as being a leader or a CEO of a company, right? You get so drained out by the and overwhelmed by the the amount of money mm -hmm. that you're just like, you know what? I'm up there. No one's gonna catch me, kind of thing. So you lose your moral compass or your your work ethic, kind of thing. Yeah, I think it's also possible that once they reach that point mm -hmm. where maybe they feel like they're financially invisible right yeah i think they're in so deep that for them to stop would be deemed suspicious and yeah and that would lead to investigations yes mm -hmm. and so either way you're getting investigated yeah and so as a means to cover your own ass you stick with it and then you ride it out to see how far it goes yeah so the big decision was at the beginning kind of ish i think the biggest decision was when their um accountant came up with that new method for revenue valuation which, by the way, was passed. Like, wow. for, because they had, you have to, um, if you come up with a new means of accounting, you have to address it to whatever trade. Yeah, because you're, you're a public trading company. Exactly. Yeah. You have to bring it up to um, whatever your local governing agency mm -hmm. is involving those matters. And then they review it, deem if it's okay or if it's bad. And if it's bad, they give you notes on things to revise. Or if it's so bad, they just tell you to come up with a new plan altogether. Yeah. And in this instance, um, for that valuation of future revenues being passed on as current day revenues, that was deemed acceptable. Hmm. Different times. Yeah, so, and also those SPVs I mentioned where they were taking the bad investments and putting them into their own, essentially, own companies. Yeah. That was also not illegal. That was not illegal? It was not illegal. It is now, though. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So, so I have a theory. I... I believe that corporations don't care about the individual, don't care about the average citizen. Uh, and I believe that they can't care about the average citizen because they are, su they are such large entities that essentially they, they, don't, they aren't human anymore. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have one person running these companies. You have a whole bunch of people. Yeah, you have a whole list of influence and, that, and it's just for making a decision. It's, it's insane. So, so from that perspective, these companies only view human beings in terms of profit, in terms of how can I make the most amount of money? Yeah. Now I'm sure in the future corporations will, you know, we go from capitalism to a more conscious capitalism type of uh, environment. Yeah. But I, I don't think that they care about the average human being because they're not human. Sure, they're run by humans, but it's almost like they take on a life of, of their own. Yeah, and they're then... on a world scale. They see everything like they're good. Uh, I don't want to really say it, but like they're God. You know what I mean? It's yeah, just kind of like perspective, yeah. from your perspective, your window, whatever. 
And I did want to say that this scandal, actually, they did not get away with it. Um, during trial, um, Ken Lay actually ended up dying. And um, the other CEO, which is Jeff Skilling, got 24, 24 years. years in a prison. Of course, the company of, filed for bankruptcy. Yeah, filing for bankruptcy and all that sort. Also, I did want to mention the um, yeah, the uh, S the SPVs are not illegal; they are very legal. It's um just how you operate them. Yeah, is yes. Yeah. So there's there's a method of how to operate them. Yes, yeah. the way that Enron was handling their SPVs was deemed illegal. Yeah, in today's terms, for obvious reasons. Yes, but <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yes. I find it interesting that pe I'm sure there are a lot of people who think like, oh, Apple gives a fuck about me. Um, no. Whatever company over here cares they about don't me, care. they care that, about your that's interests. That's why, when, like, for example, the the latest like pissy moment that we all had with Apple was the fact that we do not get a charger wall adapter anymore <laughs> for a battery powered phone that requires charging. So they're trying to extract of, as much money from you yeah, as possible. That's yeah. what they're doing. They're blaming it on, blaming it on. Oh, we're trying to side with the environment here and just not cook up these devices. But you're going to cook up double the amount now because people are going to buy double or triple <laughs> your fucking accessories, dude. Well, it's like the... Um, so fuck the oceans. You're liars. It's like the age-old <laughs> the age old <laughs> adage that doesn't exist, or at least that my dad says. It's technically more eco-friendly if we were to just use the same cars that we make. Like, if we stop making cars altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just no more cars around the globe. We can only use what we got. That would be the most eco-friendly version of it. Yeah. Because you're not yeah. using those metals to make new cars. You can use them for other shit. On top of that, you're already using things that exist. Yeah. You're reusing, reducing, mm -hmm. and recycling. Reusing mm -hmm. cars, recycling their parts, reducing, I guess, overall emissions because no new cars are being made. Yeah. And on top of that, you're reducing the amount of metals and toxic chemicals that are being produced yeah. in order to make those cars yeah now if i were to take one takeaway from any of this what is that it's get mad at your government yeah government yeah. is complicit because when it comes to the dupont or the 3m scandal they kind of just let that shit happen mm -hmm. they're very selective with who they choose to help or who they choose to deny there was a lot of information out there saying how bad c8 was and Gen X. It's yep. it's like uh, Paul Check's quote. He says that we don't have a White House. We have um, a corporate headquarters. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For exactly. the uh, for the Agent Orange, they didn't care about the negative side effects of it because, quite frankly, it wasn't their. They didn't need to know in their case, or so they thought. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they did know, and they released it anyways because they thought it would help them win. That's also another scary thought. Mm -hmm. Or in this case of Enron, how the fuck did they allow company valuation to happen that way or at least in terms of your revenue stream that's insanity or dieselgate they didn't even bother to check if there was anything involved inside of the ecu yeah or the defeat device or whatever they didn't even bother to check in and they're like eh, it's good we're gonna move on it's fine so if anybody to get mad at i mean because these companies i'm not gonna say they're incentivized to do shitty things but they they kind are. of are. If they can get away with it, I mean, and they can make shit tons of money in the process without doing anything that at the time is deemed illegal, they're mm -hmm. going to do it. You're going to get more of what you incentivize. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not trying to say, like, people are incentivized to be shitty people, but I guess our the way our government is structured mm -hmm. allows them to be shitty people. Yeah. And they're more than willing to destroy your life for the sake of money. more money. About daughter. And yeah. more power. You but, know, like... I feel like certain areas, in terms of lawmaking, there needs to be more restrictions. Some areas, maybe they could lighten up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go into which is which, specifically, but for this instance, in terms of environmental impact, just carefully checking vehicles, or better yet, using information that has been around since the freaking 70s. Yeah. yeah. That you just bothered to brush off your shoulder because it was a little bit more convenient for you to not think about is disgusting. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's sectors like that that should be taken in with or have a little bit more attention drawn to them. And it, it's definitely a black and white uh, subject to speak on because it's, it's not like every corporation is out to get you or is evil. I think you mean it's a gray area. Yeah, it's a, it's a gray area. It's more of what we just spoke about, which is you get whatever you incentivize. 
we incentivize healthy things, we're going to get more of that. Yeah, and also, I mean, if you really want to end this off on a blame the government, get mad at them note, I... <laughs> get mad at them note. You are what you eat kind of thing. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but in 2019, it was reported that companies such as Netflix, Amazon, and others such as Chevron, Delta Airlines, uh, General Motors, Goodyear Tire and Rubber, IBM, um, U.S. Steel, and a whole bunch of others yeah. paid zero dollars in federal taxes. Amazing. Zero dollars. dollars. <laughs> that, is, yeah. that is stunning. And the wealthy don't pay their fair share. No, it's corporations don't yeah. pay their fair share. They're like, well, aren't people that are in corporations wealthy? Yes. And I'm sure that they probably pay a healthy amount of tax like for their own personal reasons, like, you know, income yeah. tax, other shit like that. That's possible. But these corporations, we've been allowing them to get away without paying taxes for such a long time. That's uh, friggin' messed up. Yeah. So if you're going to get mad at anybody, get mad at the government for allowing this shit to happen. Yeah. And I'm not going to blame one party or the other in this instance because it's been happening on both sides for years. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I'm not going to say uh, storm the Capitol or yeah, anything. Yeah, don't storm. But... <laughs> We're not trying to incentivize violence. We're just trying to incentivize change. Educate yes. yourself and stand up to these. Exactly. <laughs> just so... know, you know the bullshit you're being fed. <laughs> <laughs> storm the fucking well, Capitol. Well, we, ha we do have more wealth for you. Um, and that is to feed the mind with the 2AM podcast, guys. Go check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many more. We're also on YouTube, so you can like, subscribe. And yeah, just let us know how we're doing with our content. That would be great. Also, please, if you're listening, please with a big P. If you're listening, please, please, please. please. give us a five star review on uh, Apple Podcast. That would be amazing. It would help us a lot. And uh, thank you guys for the support. And again and again and again, we shall do this one more time for them. In a three, a two, a one, two, three. Oh. Peace. Peace.